the sun Where to stand in the morning And who told the ocean You can only come this far And who showed the moon Where to hide till Welcome uh, to this online service. We hope you are well and God has kept you. Even though we are in a season uh, that nobody is understanding, but we know that God has kept you well. And so we welcome you to our online service this morning, and we know that God is going to bless you. So I welcome you wherever you are, whether you are listening from the internet, from Facebook, uh, in whatever channel you are getting us from, we kindly ask you to walk with us in this service, and I believe by the end of it all, God is going to bless you. So let us begin uh, with a word of prayer so that we can go through uh, in this service. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you so much for this morning, and Lord, we are humbling ourselves to you, that you may use us even to reach out to your people this morning. And wherever they are, in whatever situation they are in, my Father and my God, we know that your hand is not too short, that it cannot be able to reach them. But wherever they are, in whatever situation they are in, my Father, may you come through for them. Even as we go through this service, we dedicate it to your hand, that Father, you may take us through. We welcome you and we bless you because we pray in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. So welcome and God bless you. You are Yahweh, our 
him just blessed him this morning hallelujah hallelujah in Jesus name we worship you amen we just sing this hymn that says blessed assurance Jesus is mine we believe in this season still our God we have an assurance that our blessed redeemer liveth forever Amen. Wherever you are in your house, you can just stand up and just worship together with us. Because we know that there is power in worship. So if you sing along together with us, blessed assurance, God is going to minister unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's sing blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Head of salvation, patches of In his blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture now passed on my side. Angels descend. From above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Oh, this is my story. This is my story. 
seize my song, praising my Savior all my day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising, praising my Submission, all is a dread. I in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His good. This is my song, yeah. praising my Savior all my day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all my day long. Habarin Chema, Habarin Chema, Rahayangu, Yesundie, Yesundie, Mokozi Wangu, Habarin Chema, Rahayangu, Yesundie. Dio da mana, Dio da mana, Yesu angu, uni pafula, azabingu, mridi wa wakomu angu, mridi wa wakomu angu, nimezawa. Nimezawa kwa roho ya ke Habari nchema Habari nchema Raha yangu Yesu niye Yesu niye Mokozi wangu Habari nchema Habari nchema Kum salimu, kum salimu, moyo angu, mara na mora, raha angu, anilete, anilete. Si 
kukucha usiku kucha kuna nuru haleluya moko Mali, hali na mali, hali twa. Maranamona, hani fa. Nami nangoche, nami nangoche, wasubira akinita. Mwambia tu bwana ni asante 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 bwana asante simba wa kabila la yuda I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ and I welcome you to our first service. You are most welcome. Uh, I'm grateful to God for this opportunity that he has given me to share God's word with you. And I would like us to open our Bibles in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12. Uh, and verse 1. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says, at that time Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some ears of corn and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. Um, I'm going to read scriptures as we continue. Uh, let, us, uh, let us pause and pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves before you, and we thank you for this opportunity, dear Father, that you've given us in this time, O oh God. Father, in Jesus' name, I commit my hearers to you, dear Lord, that your Holy Spirit will going to work in them, O oh God, and the Holy Spirit will use me in accordance with your will, my Father. I bless your name and I honor you. In Jesus' name I do pray and give thanks. Amen. I want to speak to you on a, a, a sermon that I've, uh, I have titled, God is still 
at work. God is still at work. Uh, regardless or despite the coronavirus and the many things that are going on in our nation and even the whole world, uh, God is still at work and he's doing his work. Nothing has stopped. God is on. And so we see that uh, these uh, Jews or these leaders of the Jewish community, they were people who loved to uh, to observe the, the law. They, they were religious. They were not spiritual people. And so when they saw Jesus and his disciples as they were walking in the cornfields, it was on a Sabbath day. And they began to pick the ears of the corn and to eat them. And this thing, it really angered the, the Jews. And when you look, you see that they questioned, they critiqued, what Jesus was doing. Uh, when you read and continue in that scripture, you will see that they were asking, why is, uh, you, you, are you not observing the law? And when you read in, the, in Matthew, Luke, Mark, and the, and the Gospel of John, you will see that the, the Jewish people, they were very much uh, at war with Jesus, because they termed it as breaking the law. And the Bible continues to say, in verse number 10 of that Matthew chapter 12, that, uh, that, that and a man, uh, going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And he said, if any of you has a sheep, it falls into a pit on the Sabbath. Will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched out his hand and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other one. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. And you see, Jesus, he was in the business of, going, of doing good, but the Pharisees were in the business of looking at their religion, of keeping the law. But Jesus, he was in the business of valuing people and loving people and caring for people. And so when you go to the book of John again, in the book of John chapter 5, I'll just give two references of the time when Jesus, he healed on a Sabbath day. And that caused a commotion in the Jewish leadership. And so when you, read, when you look at, uh, uh, in the book of John from chapter 5, Jesus, he healed the man who had been uh, at that uh, Bethsaida pool, who had been there for 38 years. And you know this thing also really angered the, the, the Jews. And the Bible says, in, uh, in chapter five, in that John chapter five and verse 12, that so they asked the man, who is this fellow who told you to pick up your mat and walk? In verse 13, the man who was healed had no idea for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. This man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. And so we see that after this man was healed by Jesus, he did not know who had healed him because Jesus, he entered into a crowd, he slipped away into the crowd that was near him. And the Bible says that later on, Jesus met this man and he told him, see that you do not sin, you, you, you live a life that is, you know, clear of sin, rid yourself of the flaws of this life, that you may not get a more tough disease that the one that you had that kept you at the pool of Bethsaida for a whole 38 years. 
And so my, uh, the, the word that I, I would like to speak to you is that I don't want to dwell so much on the commotion with Jesus and the Sabbath and the Jews and the, the way they keep on, kept on confronting him. But I'm, I'm, I'm mine, I, I, want to, I want to zero in on a word that Jesus spoke. In verse 16, so because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jews persecuted him. Jesus said to them in verse 17, that is the word that I would like you to get because that is the word that God spoke to me to come and speak to you. Jesus said to them, my father is always at his work to this very day and I too, I am working. And so, my brother and my sister, I am here to tell you that even though there is coronavirus, like yesterday I was saddened to see the number of people who died in the US of A. But I'm wanting to tell you, in verse 17, that is the word of God that God has given me to tell you, that my father is always at his work to this very day. I too, and I too, I am working. Praise the Lord. And so, Jesus, I want to tell you that that's how Jesus defended himself against the Jews who had rose up against him. And so he told them, I want to repeat that word because that word has really touched my heart. Jesus said to them, my father is always at his work to this very day and I too, I am working. I am here to tell you, my brother and my sister, that God is not waiting for the corona to end, that he may start to do his work again. I want to tell you that God is still working and God is concerned with his glory. And who can bring glory to the church, to, to, to the Lord? It is me and you. And so we should continue in the Lord. And God has not stopped caring for his people. God still cares and in concern about you. God is still continuing with transformation of people's hearts. Transformation. He's transforming my heart in this season. He's he transforming your heart in this season. God is still at work and he's still doing his work. He's still giving people, he's still giving people spiritual gifts. God has not stopped. He is at work and Jesus is also at work. God is still healing. God is still even filling people with the Holy Spirit. God is still reviving the hearts of men. There are people who are seeking him day and night. They, are, they have a desire in their heart to grow up spiritually. They don't want to remain as dwarfs in the kingdom or children in the kingdom. And they are continuing to grow. They are continuing to grow. Why? Because God is still at work. God has not stopped. God is not waiting for corona to end. God is still at work. And the Bible says that God is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. In the book of Psalms chapter 50 and verse 10, the Bible says that the cattle on a thousand, uh, on a thousand hills, they are his. And so even all the beasts that are in the forest, they still belong to him. Do you have a need? God is waiting to hear your prayer. God is waiting to answer your prayer. God is still in control and God is still at work. He's just waiting to hear he, your cry. And so God is still filling his people with the Holy Spirit. And so, it, you know, when, when, the, when we get back to the congregation again, when we begin to congregate again, God, I believe that he would like to see us allow him to work in our hearts to work in our hearts, that we may come back to the congregation or to the church of God or to the, you know, to the building when we are transformed, when we have been made new. And so, my brother and my sister, 
I'm thinking, if there is anything you need to know concerning this disease, I think and I believe and I'm fully persuaded that at least you know 90%. I think that is now enough. Go back now to the word of God. Go back now to prayer. Go back now to spiritual growth. Go back now to your heart and begin to live your life as a believer. I have just uh, a, 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 a few things that I would like to, 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 to tell you that you need to exercise those things and your heart will not be fearful. Your heart will not faint. You know, sometimes you listen to the, to the, to the news, to the breaking news, and when you hear the things that are happening, you feel like your heart is breaking. But when you go to the, I've, 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 I've done that on myself, and I have seen that it works, that when you listen so much to the breaking news, you find that your heart is fainting. You feel like you are starting to get worried. But when you stay in the word of God, when you stay in prayer, you feel that you are encouraged. And the Lord begins to encourage you and to give you strength. And so I have a few things that I've written here. And I would like you to look into them. And the Lord will bless you. For the remaining of the time, as we wait for this season, because indeed and indeed, God is coming to just bring this thing to an end in the name of Jesus. In the book of uh, 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 4 and verse 2, the Bible says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all suffering and doctrine. Are you a man of God? Are you a preacher? Are you a pastor? The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all so long suffering and doctrine. You have your family. You have the people you interact with from day to day. The Bible says continue to preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, exhort with all so long suffering and doctrine. If you are a parent, speak the word of God in your house. Exercise what you have been doing for all these years in the church. Do it in your own house and the Lord will bless you. Another mandico that I want to give you. The church is in your heart. The church is in your heart. You are the temple of God. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. 16, the Bible says that don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. It continues to say in verse number 19 that for the, uh, for the uh, verse number 19 it says for the wisdom of this world is foolishness uh, in God's sight as it is he catches the wise in their craftiness. That's what we have seen happening in the world. But us, we are the temple of the living God. Let us, even though the church that is built by stone uh, uh, is closed for now, exercise church in your own heart. Exercise church with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Have time to impart in yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. I would also want to, to, us to read 1 Peter 2 and verse 11. It, the Bible says, we are pre pilgrims and strangers. My brother and my sister, I want to tell you that we are still pilgrims. No, nothing has changed. We are still pre pilgrims. We are still on the journey. We are still called. We are still, the eternal life is still there. And hell is still there. And so, can you arise and let's continue with our life, with our spiritual life. Because that's what God expects 
of us. Nothing has stopped. God is still at work. And Jesus is still at work. And God is concerned very much with his glory, as I told you. Who can bring this glory to God? It is me and you, the church of God. So let us continue with our spiritual life, regardless of what is happening in the name of Jesus. In the book of Colossians, in the book of Colossians, chapter uh, 3 and verse uh, 16, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach, admonish one another in all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Let the word of God dwell in me, dwell in you richly in the name of Jesus. As we teach as we admonish one another in all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude. We are not supposed to be murmuring and complaining. We are supposed to be singing those psalms and hymns with gratitude. Let's do, let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let's teach one another in the home. You see, the technology, it's a very... A good thing depending on how you use it. You can even send SMSs of the word of God to your friends and that is good because the word of God can never be stopped. That is good. So fill your heart and share it with your children. Share it with those who are near you and God is going to bless you. I said nothing has stopped. God is still at work. The kingdom of God is expected to continue at work. Arise, my brother. Arise, my sister. Worship the Lord. In the book of Revelation, chapter 4 and verse 10, the Bible says that the elders, the 24 elders, they are worshiping God who is enthroned, you know, and, and, and lives forever and ever. They are casting their crowns before the throne saying, worthy, worthy, worthy. And so God, he is expecting you to lift up that good aroma, that sweet fragrance of your worship. So my brother, my sister, I'm here to just tell you that nothing has stopped. God is expecting you to continue with spiritual life, to continue with spiritual growth, to continue in communion, to continue in relationship, a close relationship, an intimate relationship with him. God is still at work. And so my brother and my sister, if you have a need that you need God to come through for you, you know, Maybe you have some rental houses and you, 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 are, you are wondering, why are these people paying me? And when you look, you, 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 any, you are asking yourself and you answer yourself. They are not paying because they've been laid off or maybe they've been not been going to work. But when you pray, when you pray, God will provide for you. I want to repeat that in uh, Psalms 50 and verse 10. The Bible says that cattle, the cattle on a thousand hills and every beast of the field, they belong to him. God is waiting for you to pray. God is waiting for you to ask. God is waiting for you to relate with him in the name of Jesus. I want to end there, but I want to just admonish you. I just want to urge you that keep going, keep going. Nothing has stopped because Jesus is still at work and God is still at work in my heart, in your heart, in our lives. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be with you always. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, mighty God. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are at work. And your son, Jesus Christ, you are always at work. And we want to thank you, dear Master Lord, because indeed when we look at ourselves and our families, oh God, and even the body of Christ, indeed you are still at work. 
in the name of Jesus. You are still restoring souls. You are still blessing your people. You are still giving out spiritual gifts to those who are seeking you. And so I pray for my listener. And I also pray for myself, dear Lord, that Lord, you will help us, oh God, to know and to realize that indeed nothing has stopped, that we may continue with our spiritual lives because we are pilgrims and strangers in, th in this life in the name of Jesus. Bless my listeners, O oh God. May you bless the church of God, O oh Father. May you keep them, O oh God. And may you, O oh God, help them not to be worried, not to fear, but to look to heaven where our help comes from. In the name of Jesus, bless them, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we do pray and we give thanks. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Amen. I hope you have enjoyed the service and I hope uh, the Lord has ministered to you and we know that uh, uh, God is still at work even in this season of Corona as the minister of the gospel has just shared with you. And so you can uh, reach us uh, through the phone numbers that are down on your screen. And also you can uh, support us uh, with your offering and your tithe. Uh, you can use the account that is down there at your screen. And we believe when you give, the hand that giveth is the hand that is blessed. We know that uh, in such a season, uh, many people are asking, where am I going to get something to give? But we believe whatever you have, whatever you have, it might be small, it might be big in your own nature, just share it uh, through our account and we, it is going to reach us. So don't forget that the hand that giveth is the hand that receive. Blessed is the hand that giveth, blessed the person that giveth, and when you do so, we know that the Lord who is in heaven is going to reach you and is going to bless you. We are praying for the blessing of God, the abundance of God to flow in you in the name of Jesus. So let us conclude by a word of prayer. I want to pray for your business. I want to pray for your family. And I want to pray for wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for ministering unto us. And even the person that is watching us, you know him or her. You know the name. You know the situation, you know the background, you know the need. Father, may you reach forth your hand. We pray for your healing. Even in this season of Corona, we are covering our members. We are covering this person that is listening to us with the blood of Jesus. Just as you are covered the children of Israel, that they, when the enemy of death was coming to destroy, it never touched the children of Israel. We are covering this person with the blood of Jesus, that Father, no evil, no harm is going to come upon him. Thank you, Father. Be blessed, be glorified. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. same